This is CRT TV with Jake Danger 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 Jolly. Welcome. Thank you for tuning in. You're watching CRT TV with Jake Danger Jolly. And we've got three awesome films for you guys to watch tonight. The first one up, The Present Situation. It's a Christmas film, and boy, during these times, there's a couple things I miss. Christmas and going to the movies. But it seems like all we've been doing is a lot of quarantine. And we've got films to cover each subject. Oh, sorry. Oh, hold on. Is this Jake Danger Jelly? Yes, this is him as we're trying to host. What are you even doing? Well, I'm trying to host a show. We got. What is your little show even about? It's just kind of about hanging out, learning about. I heard you didn't even have any toilet paper. That was the last episode. I've got that taken care of now. It was on Christmas Eve, up in old Jollysville. It was 50 degrees, but there was quite a chill. In an old country home, there was good old Saint Nick on his usual mission, but he had to act quick. He was running behind, but he mustn't be rude. He had to indulge in the good Yuletide food. He ate up the cookies, but tipped over the glass. He spilled all the milk and fell right on his ass. Awoken abruptly by that awful, awful clatter was little Jenny Lou to see what was the matter. And bless her poor eyes, for what did she see? Kris Kringle lay motionless under the tree. She checked for a pulse. She gave him a smack. Picked up an old nightstick and gave him a whack. She looked in the stockings, not a gift to be found. Then she noticed the bag lying there on the ground. She pulled out a race car, a teddy, a doll, then a Swarovski crystal. She was having a ball. As Christmases go, she was having the best. But she had to clean up this merry old mess. Jenny Lou took her toys and she toddled away. With the evidence gone, it would be Christmas Day. Next morning, Jenny's mother cooked pancakes and bacon. The TV was on, and the news, it was breaking. A catastrophe here in this special report. Some families want to take Santa to court. Christmas did not come for half the U.S. Let's hear from some folks who are presentless. No presents, no gifts. Oh me, oh my. The children are crying. Why? Santa, why? It seems that this town is preparing for war. I'm coming. I'm coming. Who's there at the door? I'm Jordan. I'm Jayla. They remarked with a grin. We're the detectives. May we come in? I just put on coffee. Please, sit down. No, thank you. Said Jayla. May we look around? Jordan stooped to the floor, and he gave it a lick. By golly, by jingle. This taste of St. Nick. 
the Tillerman siblings' faces turn sour. Where were you last night around the three o'clock hour? I was asleep, right here at home. What's this about, you crazy old gnome? Santa's gone MIA. Jayla said with a sneer. His coordinates tell us he was right around here. Mama remembered Jenny was up and about. Let me talk to my daughter. We'll figure this out. And so Mama slipped up to Jenny Lou's room, not knowing she saw Father Christmas's doom. Jenny reached in the bag and pulled out a hat. Mama couldn't believe it. She looked at the brat. Oh, Jenny Lou, dear, how did you do that? Then Jenny Lou told her good mother all, the milk, the cookies, the slip and the fall, how she dragged Santa's body right out to the trash. Then she reached in the bag and she pulled out some cash, which she gave to her mother. And Mama said, Oh, wow. I have to get rid of Tillerman, now. Right there on the sofa, the little elves sat. They hadn't found Santa, but did find his hat. Mama crept up behind with that magical sack, and she snatched up the elves. They never looked back. The elves turned into toys, which she gave to the kid, and they kept Santa's bag and the secrets it hid. But dear little children, don't worry or fear, though Santa is gone, or so I hear, that ever since that fateful year, Mr. Krampus is spreading the holiday cheer. Hey, would anyone like an orange? God help us, every one. I'm Jordan. I'm Jayla. They remarked with a grin. And I'm Jakey. Said Jakey the elf, who had the most awesome elf voice ever. And it was awesome because with his smile, he saved Christmas in that moment. And Santa Claus got up and they high-fived and everyone had Christmas cookies. And it was awesome. And I got presents too. Merry Christmas. Well, Vester, here we are at Colonel Cobb's famous museum and workshop. How you doing today, Vester? Well, I'm doing fine, Colonel Cobb. I tell you, it's just terrific. Just terrific? How come? Well, I got my own new Apple product. You got a new Apple product? Wow, tell us about it. Sure, it's Apple Juice. <laughs> apple Juice. Well, Vester, you are a funny guy. Well, let me tell you something. I don't get any respect wherever I go. You don't get any respect. No, I don't get any respect. What do you mean? I'm so dead off Rodney Dangerfield disrespects me. Hi, <laughs> I'm the most unluckiest guy in the world. Unluckiest guy in the world? Well, just the other day, you got saved from a burning building. That's right, I got saved from a burning building. Then what happened? A fire truck ran over me. <laughs> And that was the conclusion of The Present Situation, directed by Alex David Caperton. This film was made in only 48 hours. 
and it is a gorgeous film. And we have high caliber acting and the sound is amazing. And the other thing I want you to keep in mind is the entire film has a rhythm and rhyming to it that if it was off just a little bit, you're gonna notice, but it maintains it throughout. I think it's an amazing piece of work and art and it definitely shows what can happen in 48 hours if you have the right team of people put together. My uh, tip of the hat to the whole team. And the coolest character of the movie probably has to go to reporter Holly Jolly. I mean, obviously because of the name. I see what you did, Alex. I see what you did. I wish it were Christmas, but actually a lot of us are in quarantine. Speaking of quarantine, Let's check out my friend Gabriel Kirk's film. Let's get to it. Good morning, this is the latest from the Pentagon. All across America, quarantine has gone into effect to counteract the spread of COVID-19. American military forces have been called up to act as auxiliaries. This is BBC News and World Report. Thrill me. Yes, sir. We've been activated. Yes, sir. Showtime. Where I'm going, I don't need clothes. I hold this truth to be self-evident. I make this look good. This Justin, we have the latest breaking news for our viewers. A cure for COVID-19 has just been announced. The American president has just confirmed that the quarantine is officially over and all military forces are to stand down. This is the most up-to-date headline with BBC News and World Report. Stupid BBC and World Report. Hey, I'm not just no ordinary fool. You're not an ordinary fool? No, I'm an educated fool. An educated fool? Yeah, there was only one thing that kept me out of college. What was that one thing that kept you out of college, Master? High school. <laughs> what do you mean you didn't do good in high school? I did great. I went to the Vaseline High School. Vaseline High School? How'd that work? Well, I slipped right in and I slid right out. <laughs> hi oh, Colonel Cobb, the other day we had a shooting at our church. Oh, a shooting at your church? My goodness, that's awful. What happened? 
Only one place it was injured. Only one person was injured, thank goodness. Who? The shooter. hi -o. Hello and good evening. Once again, this is Jonathan Smilesgood bringing you your local breaking news. Once again, our top story tonight revolves around the wanted fugitive known as Jake Danger Jolly, who is wanted by local authorities for bringing entertainment that is too dangerous for your local television. A local wild man, whose identity shall remain anonymous, claims to have real video footage of Jake Danger Jolly. He has presented that to our news station at this time. For those of you who may have children in your living rooms, understand that some of our footage may be too disturbing for younger audiences. The film crew approached the local farmer for an interview. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, can we speak what to you hell? for an interview? Get off wait, my property! wait, wait, no, Get off no, my no, no, right no, no, no. What happened when you saw the famed criminal? Man, I, I, I looked across across over yonder and, and we made eye contact and I swear I was so scared my back hair went on and I, I was terrified. Sir, what do you say to those who claim that this is all just a hoax? It's not a hoax! Everyone thought I was crazy when I went off the grid, but I got kidnapped by aliens and, and I saw danger and it's not a hoax! I, I proved it! I ain't crazy! <laughs> I ain't crazy! <laughs> I swear, I saw him! Strange words from a strange man. This is Jonathan Smilesgood signing off. Stay safe out there, Columbus. <laughs>
What's in the basement hasn't been publicly screened in 20 years. Tonight's actually a pretty big deal. Really? Yeah, apparently at the premiere back in the 90s, one of the actors went apeshit, started killing people in the audience, told everyone the movie made him do it. They never caught the guy either. That's what I'm talking about. Who in their right minds makes movies like this? I guess people just like to fuck with people. Shit's cray cray, right? Right. Can I get a uh, whiskey cranberry, please? That's weird. Okay. You're that actor guy. You're that guy that works at the movie theater. Hey, where's uh, Sam been? Oh, did no one tell you? He quit like a week ago. Apparently he had some sort of a breakdown, threatened to kill some customers for sticking gum to the seats or some shit. No one's heard from him since. Well, shit. <laughs> yeah. We just hired that new guy, Seth. Hopefully he sticks around longer than Sam did. Hey guys, sorry I stopped the film. I just have to go to my basement real quick. Don't go in the basement. Well, I don't. No, I really need to. Don't go in the basement. Don't go in the basement. Don't. Don't go in the basement. Don't. Don't go in the basement! Intermission time. Three minutes before the next show starts. One for what's in the basement, please. You shouldn't be showing this film. Yeah, I know, right? Sales are a little underwhelming. No, no, no. This movie's sick. Yeah, I hear it's pretty ill. You don't understand, child. This film kills. <laughs> yeah, I heard it's pretty killer. Enjoy the show! I warned you of this evil, but you didn't listen. Something's outside. It is now inside. And once it's inside, it can't be stopped. It's coming. It's... I'm a woman of science, Teddy. Not superstition. Medicine, not magic. Fact, not fear. But it's a fact that there's evil in abandoned places. You see, evil, evil never dies. Uh, the, dead don't, the dead don't stay dead. If things go bump in the night, <laughs> they're the sins of the past. This dialogue gets shittier and shittier every time I see I this piece of shit. The truth is buried. Jesus. If you want answers, the real question is just how deep are you willing to go? That's what she said. Excuse me, sir. Some of us are actually trying to watch the movie. Don't get your panties in a bunch. I wouldn't want your monocle to fall out into your champagne. I never. All right, you bourgeois prick. Anyone here? 
damn it. Company policy doesn't allow us to sell tickets to people who are more than an hour late. Bitch, please. Danielle, you magnificent bastard. Come here, bro. Hey, how much are tickets anyway? I don't give a fuck. Just walk on in. People do it all the time. Just buy a drink for me later, okay? All right, on. Huh? only I can hear. I had to know what was in the dark. What was in that damnable basement. I have Whatever to pee it was, now. It was not of this world. Then go to the bathroom. <laughs> I can't... What the fuck's in that fucking basement anyway? What the fuck does that mean?
tired of being disrespected. A lot of people don't know what that's like, but you do, don't you? Yeah. See, the cinema is like a church in every movie a miracle. Especially a 90s classic like what's in the basement. You understand? You loved it. You loved it so much, you stayed for the second screening without paying. And I am a man of constant sorrow. I've seen trouble all my day. I bid farewell to old Kentucky, the place where I was born and raised, the place where he, he was born and raised, for six long years I've been in trouble, the pleasures here on earth i found. basement in the Alamo. There's another one you're really going to love. Yeah? Oh, yeah, like what? There you go. When people are going out, and people fall in love. Yeah. When people fall in love, you know what they say? What do they say? They say forever. Oh, yes, they do. They say forever. My goodness. And you know what people say after they're married? I don't know. Best of what do people say after they're married? They say whatever. You're that actor guy. You're that guy that works at the movie theater. No, I'm the host of the show. That's the guy who works at the movie theater. You're that actor guy. You're that guy that works at the movie theater. No, I'm a frog. You're that actor guy. You're that guy that works at the movie theater. You're that actor guy. You're that guy that works at the movie theater. No, I'm the host of the show. That's the guy who works at the movie theater. You're that guy that works at the movie theater. I'm the host of the show. He's Scooter J. Frock. He's the guy who works at the movie theater. I mean, how I many guys? What's going on here? Right, Jake Danger. Scooter. Movie theater guy. I mean, what's, what's going on? You're that actor guy. And that is the conclusion of Underground 35. Directed by Derek Stewart and Eric Basso. And a fun fact about the film if you've seen or heard about the film, Bong of the Living Dead, a lot of the cast and crew met on that film, including Derek Stewart and Eric Basso. And I really enjoyed Eric Basso's performance as the cinema-respecting patron who didn't want to cheat the system because it's an art house, you know, it's classy. And one of the other best performances of the film, as I felt, was the haunting line delivered by Daniel Allen Keeley. The cinema is like a church, each film a miracle. 
A lot of great gag performances and hilarious side characters abound in the film, as well as the impending feeling of dread. It's an awesome film. I like it a lot. Let's give it a hand. Not what I meant. Don't you go in the basement. All right, I want to thank all of the filmmakers once again for providing their amazing works of art to the show. Let me have goofy laughs with them and all of that. Please tune in next week. We're going camping. Have a good one. Don't give me a kiss or hug or handshake. We're social isolating and sheltering in place. Sweetheart, stop touching your own face. Don't pass COVID-19 on. Give me an elbow bump or something. A wave or just a head nod will stay six feet apart. I don't want to feel the symptoms start. Don't pass COVID-19 on. And I'll stay alone. Take no chances. Call me on Zoom. That's what my stance is. I'm not gonna flirt with doom. Wash your hands for 20 seconds. Wear face masks out in public. Let other people Don't give the gift you can't ungive. Don't pass COVID-19 on. Safety first. Preferably more, but wear face masks out in public. Let other people live. Don't give the gift you can't ungive. Don't pass COVID 19 on.